Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the implementation group for the Center for Internet Security Controls. In the prior session, we looked at the Center for Internet Security and we said this center has 18 controls. All what we said is this is what the Center for Internet Security is. We did not, we did not discuss the controls, the 18 controls. In this session also, we will not discuss the controls. So what are we discussing in this session then? In this session, we're going to be discussing the implementation groups. Why? Because once we understand what Center for Internet Security is, once we understand what the implementation groups are, the three implementation groups, then once we learn about the controls, we know how these controls fit within each implementation group. So implementation group are a way to organize the controls. We have 18 different controls. Don't worry about them. We're going to learn about each one of them separately. But these controls, some of them falls into IG1, some of them falls into IG1 and IG2, some of them falls into IG1, IG2, and IG3. So in this session, we define what is IG1, what's IG2, what is IG3. Now, how does how do we organize this? Well, it's based on the priority, security need of the organization, the risk profile of the organization, the level of maturity, the readiness of the organization cybersecurity program. Really, what it boils down to is the size and the resources and the priority of that company. So certain companies, they have an extensive need, a critical need for cybersecurity programs. Other companies may not. So this is what we need to discuss in this session. So the CIS control implementation groups are divided into three groups based on the risk profile, resources and enterprise has available to them to implement those CIS controls. Now, obviously, everyone would love to implement all three IG1, IG2, and IG3. Just take all the controls and implement all the controls. Well, that's great, but you need the resources to do that. You may not have, you may not need the resources. And sometimes you don't, you don't, you don't need that much of a cybersecurity if you, if you don't have critical data. So implementation groups are recommended guidance to prioritize the implementation of the CIS critical security controls. For example, my company, I may only need to implement controls that belong to IG1. Maybe the national security or a, a critical government organization may need IG3. So I'm just giving you two extremes. So cybersecurity hygiene, we have this term cyber, with cybersecurity hygiene refer to the practices and measures that individual and organization take to protect their digital asset from cyber security threats. So what is your cybersecurity hygiene? Is it AG1, AG2, or AG3? Once again, in this session, we, dis we mentioned the controls. Those are measures. We will define them later. All what you need to know now is what is IG1? What is IG2? What is IG3? So once we discuss the control, we say this control refers, you know, applies to IG1 group. You know what does that mean? Let's go ahead and get started by defining the implementation groups. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Starting with IG1, this is the foundational set of cyber defense safeguard that every enterprise should apply to guard against the most common attacks. So everyone should have IG1. What's IG1? Those are basic safeguards you should have. For example, password, a multi-factor authentication, a lock, in your, a lock in your servers, have locks on the doors, just basic cybersecurity defenses. Then we could have IG2. IG2 builds on IG1. So when we say IG2, everything that, that applies to IG1 will apply to IG2. So IG2 is IG1 plus IG2. IG2 is intended for medium-sized companies that have moderate level of cybersecurity maturity and resources. So think of IG2 as a medium-sized company. Think of IG1 as a small small company i have any the size on the side for a reason so so medium-sized companies they will have little bit 
little bit more of resources. They will have a little bit more of a cybersecurity maturity. They know their need. They know the risks. They're exposed to more risk because they have more resources. They have more data. They have more sensitive information. Then we have IG3. Well, IG3 com comprise of all controls and safeguards, which is IG1, IG2, plus additional resources, IG3. So IDG, ID, IG3 is intended for companies that hire advanced cybersecurity services to optimize their security measures, controls, and policies. Now, many organizations might be satisfied with IG1 and IG2. It satisfies their needs. That's all what they need while others may expire to achieve the advanced security posture provided by IG3. Again, IG3 is the highest. Usually you have a need for this. You have the resources. You're a large company. Let's discuss again each group a little bit more separately, just to kind of under understand this. So IG1 controls consist of foundational set of cybersecurity defense that every enterprise. So IG1 applies to all organization. This is the baseline for your security effort to defend against common attacks, phishing attacks, malware, antivirus, so on and so forth. So IG1 is designed for small companies with limited cybersecurity budgets and IT resources that store also low sensitive information. The safeguards selected for IG1 should be implemented with limited cybersecurity expertise. You, you don't have the resources to hire, you know, specialized advanced knowledge aimed to attack, to thwart general attacks and non-targeted attacks. Non-targeted means they're just someone is fishing for information and they got to you. They're not really targeting you. These controls are a set of best practices and guidelines designed to help organizations to improve their cybersecurity posture and protect against common cyber threat. So simply put, they are foundational, fundamental starting point for organization looking to enhance their security posture. Just Fundamental. You want to start with these IG ones. What are they? We're going to look at the controls later. Then once you advance a little bit more, you want to implement IG2. IG2 is the second level in the categorization used in the context of cybersecurity and compliance standard associated with the CIS control. Now you are a level higher. IG2 is set up in terms of security maturity, readiness above the foundational level. It includes additional security controls and measures that are considered more advanced and robust compared to IG1. Now you have more advanced and robust techniques to defend yourself. Again, we'll talk about those controls later on. Typically appropriate for organizations that have a higher level of cybersecurity maturity and resources to implement more advanced security control. So here we're talking about maybe medium-sized companies, not mom and pop, not large companies, someplace in between. Then we have the IG3. And you guys got the point. IG3 what? IG3 is the highest level of categorization used in the context of cybersecurity and compliance with the CIS controls. This is the most advanced and the most advanced and most comprehensive set of security controls and measure within the CIS. These controls are intended for organization with high level of security maturity, significant resources, and a strong commitment to cybersecurity. I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat myself. IG3 builds on the IG1 and IG2. So if something belongs to IG3, a control belongs to IG3, IG3, obviously it's also belong to IG1 and IG2, but IG3 is more sophisticated controls and robust security measures. So this IG3 is intended for organization with the highest level of security requirement. Think of national security infrastructure, critical infrastructures, dam, electric grid, airport. This is what we're talking about when we talk about IG3. Those sectors with exceptionally sensitive data because if something happened to them and they're going to affect many, many people. Let's take a look at this MCQ from Farhat Lectures that's going to help us kind of get an idea what's IG1, what's IG2, what's IG3, and there's no IG4. We could eliminate one of the options before even reading the question. A mid-sized e-commerce company with established cybersecurity program is looking to further strengthen its defenses. They have a moderate level of resources and expertise, which CIS implementation group should consider. Well, let's look for some keyword. They already, they already have established cybersecurity program. If they already have one that's established, most likely they have IG1, but they're looking to strengthen their defenses and they have moderate level of resources. Not low level of resources, but not a lot. 
moderate. What do you say? It's IG1, IG2, and IG3. They're already established. IG1 is out. I, I don't see it's there's critical or high sensitive data. IG3 is out. I would say IG2. So they are looking to consider the implementation of IG2. Again, would you say this is a simple question? Yes, I would say this is a simple question, but you might see it. You want to be comfortable with IG1, IG2, IG3. Why? Because you are going to take these, you're going to take the controls and say, does this control applies to IG1, IG2, IG3? But you have to use your common sense. Is this like too sophisticated of a control, uh, an, an introductory control, an advanced control, semi-advanced, so on and so forth. What should you do? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, whether you are, you are studying for your CPA exam or learning this for the sake of learning. If you're studying for the CPA exam, invest in yourself. Your CPA exam is a 20, 30 year investment in your career. Take it seriously. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.